you have different forms of partnerships. Marriage is one form, but the most prestigious one. But as the difference between legal cohabitation and marriage is not that big anymore, the only thing why you would marry is the prestige of it, as a marker of your fantastic relationship. You could argue that's not much of a basis for marriage to be continued in the next decades. Um, or we just <coughs> marry now, but it will softly disappear. Because it's, it's, no, it's of no or not that much legal value anymore. And we will enter a Gideon's world of pure egalitarian relationships. But you could argue, perhaps that's too middle class, too educated, too much oriented towards families without children. Because when you have children, you just can't stop the relationship. You buy a house, you renovate a house, you have children, you can't divorce. Virtually, without giving up. Or standard of living. Okay, so I wasn't very happy with these future prospects. I, or perhaps I don't know which one will be correct. So I, um, I tried to look for some other things that might be important to to understand the current situation and perhaps a little bit of the future. Very hypothetical, but still. What I think is very important is that we still have spousal age differences. Men are two or three years older than their wives. In Sweden, the gender equal country, 2.7. Belgium, 2.4. Um, but it's a rough measurement. This is just average of marriage. It's not necessary that uh, you should look at couples and within couples of the age difference. These are just men, <coughs> age of marriage. But it's it's not uh, it's not crazy. We know there is an age difference in favor of the men in almost any country. Um, so this is I think very very important. I think it's uh, it, it might be related to the fact that we still don't live in an equal gender equal country or gender equal West. Um, but even if you, if you think this is not a good indicator to, to measure this, which, which is fine, you, you, you can criticize this, I think it might have consequences. Um, Rothstein wrote something very interesting on, on the possible impact of age difference. Um, even if you have an age difference of two or three, four years, average 2.7 in Sweden, he writes on Sweden, it might have long lasting effects. You're in, in university, university is marriage market, it is. Um, boy, three years older than the girl, who starts the labor market career first, the boy, three years later the girl does. Okay, so the boy earns three years more money, earlier he earns, I you understand the number. Um, <laughs> then children come. Work family comes, work family conflict comes. Who is going to work half time? Okay. Volunteers? Husband? Mm -hmm. Not really. Wife? Not really. Okay, let's be rational. Who earns earns who earns the most money? Would be the husband. Okay. Next child. Work one woman works half time, she earns half, minimally or maximally half of the husband. Okay, you, you, you should sure stay at home and don't work, you just zero percent of work. So you start with small difference, but the consequences <coughs> might be large after ten years. If you have small difference and all the decisions are based on this, the difference will grow. So I think a lot of time he has a phrase you we have all these gender programs to create equality, but behind the back of the agent, inequality comes, enters the game again because of the age difference between spouses. I think you might have a I think it's, it's something we have to, it's a hypothesis we, we can use in any research. It's, you can test this. So I think that's, that's something we, we might want to take up. Um, Next 
second thing, mental health. Um, it's perhaps not universal observation, but in my department, I have the health system, which is mental health, and the only says mental health of women is much worse than mental health of men. Um, you, you can mix serve your students, and you have some mental health indicators. Female students have more depressive feelings and whatnot than men. It's, it's very robust this one. The more egalitarian a country is in terms of gender, the smaller the difference in mental health of men and women. Women are much more depressive than men. Men do other crazy things. They drink and fight, they smoke. But Women are not very happy, in general, averages. Um, you can connect this to marital status. Uh, if you're divorced, if you're a divorced woman, your mental health is not very well. You can repartner, then it's better. Um, there's research going on to, to dig in this uh, topic. I'm very curious to, to hear more results about it, but I think this is something very important you have to keep in mind. <coughs> <clears throat> Next thing, um, okay, how, how do we see women? Let's be honest. Beautiful creature. Okay, okay, I did some uh, research, not very scientific, <laughs> but very convincing. Anyway, so uh, this is Bali, 2008. Okay, it's still very uh, interesting. Hey! <laughs> 1935, this is Barbie. This is something different than this. Okay, do you know her? Who, who is this? Who is the model? Madonna, 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 Madonna. yes, this is Madonna. Do you know her? Yes, good, very good. Haha. Lady Gaga. Jiro? Yeah? No. Who? Who? Lady Gaga? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, this, we, give it, we give these toys to our children. These are the, the models, the pop stars. There is a research. The content of pop songs. Nine out of ten pop songs are about sex. Explicit. Do you know Saint Paul? Mm -hmm. the, the rapper Saint Paul? You know Beyonce? It's, it's all about sex. So, you have a daughter, you give her Barbies. These are the moths. This is what is a beautiful, nice female. Okay, 1984, tell me left to right where, where, where do you see women? Yeah, okay. If you have your glasses on, you can say the left. These are the women. Now, women left or right? What do you think? We take their clothes away, and then we let them run. Right. Circles. Close ups on the television. Beach volleyball is an Olympic game. Of course. Of course. This is sport. How did we go to the beach? Something like this. 100 years ago, we went like this. How do we nowadays? <laughs> Something like this. It's an extreme version, but it, 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 this, this is a true difference. Female politicians. I don't know. Do you know these? Patrick or uh, huh? Yeah. yeah. Contemporary female politicians. Chemical habits. She's not really a politician. No, but she gets oh yeah, she gets away with it. Children. Who do you want to become? I want to become Mother Teresa. <laughs> Who do you want to become? Lady Gaga? <laughs> This, this is how there, there's research on uh, 
uh, goats for children and how much textile you use. Much less than decades ago. It's, 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 this is not the research, I just show you, give you some examples, but that's the research. research. It's, it's true. The quiz show. Ah, here, the assistants. <laughs> Do you see... Uh, uh. <laughs> she is in it because she is a baby. And they, they let her do some uh, limbo things and then make jokes with the uh, stick because it's a nice show, no problem with the show, but this is how we treat women. So. Say no more, Studio Brussels, youth radio station. It's a contest. French girls, you want to do the bubble butt. Who becomes the bubble butt of Studio Brussels? If you want to sell pasta, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> no, if, if you want to sell breakfast cereals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes, 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 yes. It's, it's not a joke. It's, it's the real examples that didn't invent it. So, <laughs> well, so girls, girls here. When you wake up in the morning, it's a beautiful spring. And you say, oh, how nice. In Dutch, you call it Mutopia? <laughs> is it the pressure of the males? Or it's, oh, no, I feel happy with it. I, I love this. It's false consciousness. There is a pressure of society to show your body. You can't deny it. It's the sexualization of women. Okay, that's all. You know, it's the end of the story. <laughs> no more graphs. <laughs> but let's bring these things together. Um, we have a deinstitutionalized pure relationship. You can stop the relationship, you have very high requirements, it has to be a fantastic relationship, you have to negotiate all the time. And you can opt out, it can be finished. We have spousal age differences. <coughs> women work all the time. It is a reality. It's not a joke, it's a reality. So, in all these negotiations, who is losing? Women are losing. On average, of course. So, it can, can be stopped. There are very high requirements, and you want to make something out of it, and you want something to really want to reala realize yourself in career wise and family wise, but you're losing the game. They stay at home depressed. The relationship stops. The children are so difficult to handle. You're sitting there, sitting there, crying there, and your husband doesn't understand. This is life now, and perhaps the future. And this is really normal. Return to basics. It's not only you have the, the coast weather model norm. You have to, to be the homemaker, you have the responsibility for the home that, that we know for 100 years, but you have to be a sexy homemaker. An extra requirement. And it's a rush towards a non-economic role again. So what's the future? It's an illusionary <coughs> relationship project. <coughs> That's a very pessimistic Ending. <laughs> it's a hypothesis. <laughs> I must stop to cry. <laughs> well, think, uh, we're not there yet in terms of gender equality. That's my uh, impression. So, um, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I want to do some research on this. I mean, this is. Uh, I think it's a very important thing to, uh, to have a look at. Social demography, love and marriage brings you to a illusionary, egalitarian relationship project. Thank you very much. <laughs> but you can ask questions. <laughs> One hour and a half, I did good time. Very good. Very <laughs> sweet. <laughs> <laughs> So you have questions or comments on
Yeah, it's more a question. We talked about the pre-industrial Japan that they got divorced quite often, actually. How did it evolve afterwards? Like, did they continue divorcing really often, or did they become more traditional, staying together? Uh, and what do you mean afterwards? Yeah, after the industrial revolution and until now. Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess uh, it has changed a lot nowadays. I think they're more westernized, mm -hmm. but um, I just read one study about <laughs> Japan. It was pre industrial Japan. I don't know. But I would, I would be uh, very surprised if it was still the same uh, system. Yeah. But that, actually, that's a very good point. What, what, my, my intention was not to say. Um, that we have had this transition and pre-industrial Europe and the rest of the world are it, it also in, in changes a lot so, so uh, it was a bit artificially uh, separation so that's a very good question but I don't know we, we know at least that since the 50s with the industrialization of the post second world war industrialization and even before in fact after the first, first world war in Japan female workforce, female workforce has been very very low so after marriage, most of the Japanese women were not married, were not working anymore, or were not working at all. So it's only recently, uh, yeah. about 20 years ago, that, that uh, in, there is a, yes, an increase in female uh, labor participation. I think. So probably that will give a hint about what was happening, because this economic imbalance was very, very yeah. forceful present in Japan. So, uh, yeah. Isn't there still a lot of pressure on Japanese women once they get children to stop working? There was an article yeah. a couple of months ago in the media telling that mm -hmm. this is okay. the explanation okay. why fertility is so very low in mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. Very good. I was thinking, am I supposed to know this? <laughs> no, no. So, uh, they are in a situation that we were in 30 years ago. You 